Hello and welcome to Money Tips. This is Charles Kelly. House prices will fall by 8% next year. The country's largest lending group, that's the Lloyd's Halifax Group, have predicted in their gloomy economic forecast. So they're saying that property prices are going to fall by 8% next year and they will remain in the doldrums. They will remain flat for another few years until uh, 2024. So they're saying house prices are going to drop next year by 8% and then they will remain flat for the next few years. And they're also saying that interest rates will peak at 4% uh, by 2024, which are going to make mortgages far less affordable. Obviously, uh, that, 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 goes, that stands to reason. It, mortgages are be already becoming uh, unaffordable. Uh, but, but house prices have still been rising. However, last month, according to the Nationwide, they, they fell uh, for the first time in, in quite a while. The Nationwide reported that UK house prices fell for the first time in over a year last month, only by a small amount, by less than 1%. But it is a sign that the market is, is definitely slowing down. I know from agents, I, I, I sell property and buy sell properties myself, so I know that things are already slowing down. So this is now confirming the figures. And the feeling is that prices are going to fall next year. However, it's not bad news. Um, bear in mind that, you know, the Office for National Statistics, the ONS, said that the average price of a home increased at 13.6% to last August in a year uh, to, to 296. So an 8% fall is not exactly a huge crash in terms of what the market was before. Now, look, if you like these tips, please do share and like it and do wait to the end because I've got some special offer for you. And, you know, I, I do want you to look at some of my Mastering Your Money training because that's free. You can learn how to get your finances in order to combat these higher prices. Yes. So prices, if they fall by 8%, but look, they've gone up by 13% in the last year. I think in the previous year, they went up almost to uh, uh, that rate, to almost a 20% in the previous year. So I don't think uh, an eight percent fall is going to be too disastrous for people that have bought in the last, say, two or three years. In fact, they're still quids in; they would have done well. And especially if you are able to buy and get uh, a, a cheaper mortgage, a long-term fix. But all these fixed rates in the UK do come to an end eventually, and a hundred thousand people per month will be reaching the end of a, a fixed rate. So that that's pretty. That's not very good news for you know people in that in that position, right? So they are going to be facing maybe a 300% rise in payments because let's say their mortgage was fixed at 2% and now they're going on to a five-year fix at say 6%. Well, that's 300% more. So, you know, in, in effect, your payments could go up, say from 500 to 14, 1500 pounds. I don't know if you can hear that thunder here. We've got massive thunderstorms here in, in London. Now, we know that the Bank of England said and strongly hinted that rates will go up at, at a higher rate than expected. In other words, they've been putting rates up by you know, 0.25, that sort of thing. Now they could put rates up by 0.75 to even 1% higher than it is to tackle inflation, which has gone above 10% again. So they're unable to control inflation. But let's face it, they've been part of the, the banking, world banking movement that have printed all this money, printed trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars, pounds and euros. So what does that mean? You're inflating the value of that, that pound, right? And that dollar. So the pound is buying you less. So every year that you leave your savings in the bank, uh, say if you've got to keep the math simple, not everyone's got this amount of money, but if you if you had say a hundred thousand pounds in the bank or in, a, in savings, not earning very much, then next year that the effective buying power of that hundred thousand pounds goes down by 10,000 pounds to 90,000 pounds. However, if you if that money is is in an asset such as property and, and inflation is going up by 10 percent, then that that means that on average, that property should go up by around about that figure over time. Not every year. I mean, we can see that property has gone up at too fast a rate, maybe dropping in the next year. But you see what I mean? This is why the rich get richer and sometimes the poor get poorer. Also, look at it another way. Say you've got a debt of one hundred thousand pounds and you're paying the interest at, say, two, three, four percent, but you've bought an asset with that with that mortgage debt, which is going up over time. What do you think happens to the value of that debt over the year at 10 percent inflation? 
Well, obviously, the value of that debt is also going down with inflation. The real value of that debt is going down with inflation. Put it another way. Let's say I said to you, can you lend me £10,000, please? And I'll give you, say, £100 a year for the next 10 years, and then I'll give you back your £10,000. What would you say about that? Well, hold on a second. £10,000, I'm going to get back £10,000 in 10 years, but that won't buy me as much as it does now, will it? Obviously. Why? Because of inflation. So this is what effectively a bond is. The government is saying, buy this government bond, and, and, you know, and the government raise billions and trillions of when they say they're borrowing money, they're issuing their own bonds. They're not going down to a bank and literally borrowing it like that, although they can do. They're issuing these bonds and the banks and institutions of the pension funds buy these bonds. So when these bonds are redeemed in 10, 15, 20, even 30 years, long dated treasury bonds, 30 year term, and, and they're paying a, a very small rate of interest. But when they pay that back in 30 years time with printed money, of course, that that money has been in the, the value of that debt has been inflated away so much that it's like nothing. It's like these people have had mortgages for 25 years and they say, oh, when I bought my house, I got a mortgage of five thousand pounds. It was so big and so difficult. But, you know, now you could pay that off with a credit card, couldn't you? Uh, so when you've got a lot of debt, then and I've got debt on, on mortgages, in effect, my debt has been written off by inflation over time. And it's not quite as simple as that because you've got to pay interest on it. And if, if you're getting into trouble with your interest rate, as, as a lot of people are going to be, then sometimes you can overdo it and lose the lot. You know, when, when I've seen the situation where interest rates were 15, 16, 17, 18 percent, a lot of people lost everything because they just couldn't keep all the balls in the air. They had so many balls in the air, they're trying to keep it, and it all come crashing down. It all, blah, 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 like a juggler loses control. That's what can happen if you've got too much debt. Also, the banks can call in the debt. They think, oh, he could get into trouble. Why not, let, let's close him down. He could get into trouble. And why not let our bank, bank department buy his assets at cheap rates? You think I'm joking? That's happened. I don't know if it's happening now, but it has happened. Uh, so the Lloyds, the Nationwide are all warning that prices are falling. And these are lenders. Lenders are normally very cautious about issuing such warnings. Now, if they're saying 8%, will it really be 8%? Who knows? We just don't know. The economy is in a rocky phase. People are still suffering from uh, uh, the, the price of rising price of fuel and gas, despite the fact that the wholesale price of these products have come down. Oil is now 80 something a, a barrel, dollars a barrel. It was over 100, wasn't it? Natural gas has gone down from, say, 300 per whatever it is they buy it in to, to 100. So why aren't our bills coming down? That's another matter for, for them to, to sort out. The good news is that since Rishi Sunak took over, wholesale lending rates have, have also softened. Um, so, so mortgage rates on, on the, the mortgage market should also come down a little bit. But we're looking at, you know, 6 7% for, for these fixed rates. And if you buy in a limited company, they, they charge you even a little bit more. New buy, de buy to let investment deals are just not looking uh, viable anymore. You know, I've said this in my uh, podcast a couple of weeks ago, higher rates will kill the buy to let market. I looked at a deal the other day, it was a nice little flat uh, in a nice part of London, 400,000 pounds, ex-council, it would easily let out for over 1600 pounds a month, call it 19,000 a year. Then I looked at borrowing 75% or £300,000. And what were the payments on that at 6%? Interest only. The answer is £18,000 a year, right? 6%. At, at 2%, which it would have been a year or so ago, 2%, uh, the payments would have been 6000 a year. So you can see that a rent of 19000 a year, less a few agency charges, let's say you break even at 18000 Well, when you were paying 6,000 in interest, you had a thousand a month profit, gross profit, right? Now, the, the, the mortgage deal is, this, is, is the same as the rent on a 75% mortgage, buy to let mortgage. So how is that going to help encourage the buy to let market? Well, the answer is it can't. Now, of course, cash buyers can come in and buy properties, but we know that, you know, people who've read my book, uh, Borrow and Grow Rich, know that people have built their fortunes by leveraging, by you know, instead of getting 100,000 and buying one property, they could get 100,000, maybe buy two or three, four, four 25,000 pound deposit. They could buy four houses. But they could certainly buy more than one anyway. Um, now, they're going to be restricted on that because of the, the cost of the borrowing. 
So that is bound to affect the new buy-to-let markets. And it's, and it's also going to affect landlords who then have gone from paying 6,000 a year on their buy-to-let mortgage. Maybe they're now paying 12, 15, 18,000 a year. What's that going to do to their profit? They might just say, well, this is not worth it. The government are also introducing pun punitive legislation and making life more difficult for the small landlords, not for the big landlords, just the small landlords. So what's that going to, what are they going to do? I, I know several landlords are already thinking about throwing the towel in. So, well, that's it. I give up. I've had a few good years. Take the bloody property and you government, you find, you house people, you go and build some houses. That's what people are, are thinking. Some of the landlords are, are in that position right now. Okay. So that's, that's the news on property at the moment. Just watch out. If you think about buying at the moment, just be careful. Obviously, if you're buying for your own purposes, you want to live in that property, you found your dream house, you've got a reasonable priced mortgage, then why not go for it? You know, we, we don't know what's going to happen next year. Anything can happen. We all thought prices would come down in 2020. They didn't, they rocketed, didn't they? So you just don't know what's going to happen. Um, now, Britons are facing a long, cold winter. Strikes, um, maybe layoffs, higher energy costs, food prices. We know that inflation is not really at 10%. It's more like 15 to 20%. So just be careful out there. Be careful how you spend your money. Look at my free training. Look at my um, how to get control of your finances in 28 days to smart. Well, I'll put a link up there in the description. I want to end on a thing about the dollar. The dollar has been the world reserve currency since the Bretton Woods meeting uh, where basically the, the America became the most powerful economy in the world. They've had this uh, massive advantage of having the reserve currency of the world. Is that coming to an end? Now, the reserve currency means that everything you buy, like oil and all these sorts of goods that you buy in the world, are effectively um, controlled by the price of the dollar. So if, if America needs to buy something, they can print their own dollars, but every other country has to get dollars. Now, this has now been affected because countries in the Middle East are now selling oil outside of this reserve dollar, dollar club. Saudi, Iran, uh, Nigeria are all selling oil directly to, to China, and they're in payment terms, they're getting uh, Chinese currency denominated bonds. So they're bypassing the reserve currency uh, of, of the dollar. So that could be serious for people holding dollars. I don't know. The dollar's strong at the moment. It's it's forced this year on year percentage change. You can see that there was a massive drop back here in uh, 2007. It, you know, prices did plummet quite a bit. So it's gone from, you know, 10% up to, you know, down here to minus 20, so about, about a 30% crash. So these things can happen. It, it's not unusual. And I, I saw it happen again, um, end of the 80s, early 90s before. So it, it's it's happened before. Uh, then, of course, people buying here at that, that low point. So there are opportunities when prices fall. People who bought here 2008, nine saw a massive rise here, you know, from minus almost say minus 50 to, to, to plus 10, that's a 25% rise. And then they dropped again. There was a bit of trouble here, 2010. Then they've crept up again here up to 2015, uh, kind of dropped again. Now the, the Halifax uh, survey here is in blue. It does diverge a bit from the nationwide, but it, these are not the official figures. They're based on their lending rates. Um, and, and then they've sort of you know, trundled along here and suddenly shot up again in uh, you know, 2020, see they shot up here and, and, and now they've fallen back again uh, according to the nationwide survey and they could go down again, so sort of below here possibly. So you can see how um, th these things can, can fluctuate, right? So, so I, I wouldn't, um, you know, over time, of course they do go up. And if I was able to expand that graph over 20, 30 years, you could see that over time they, they do go up. Um, so, so, you know, I wouldn't worry too much. Let's look at the, uh, the, the markets here today. Uh, we've got stock markets seem to be okay. They're always happy. Uh, I, again, I think we are due for a, a bit of a stock market crash. Uh, Amazon shares fell sharply recently. The US stock markets, the Dow, NASDAQ, S&P, all down. And they've been falling for most of the, the year, in fact. So I, I would be careful if your pension money is tied up in, in stocks, particularly in, in the US market. So I just I'll give you a brief sort of view there on, on the property market. Um, do check out my training on, on the link below. 
uh, how to get control of your finances in 28 days because we are still in for a rocky time. That's nothing to do with the movie. Uh, we the economy is still a bit bit shaky, and you know, more and more people are using food banks. More and more people are in trouble. So now's never been a better time to get control of your advice. I also published my last podcast was 21 ways to save money and loads of great money saving tips there. So thanks for listening. 